For those of you that watched yesterday's session, Gordon Thompson was highlighting two key areas where we can help you uh, adapt and reopen your business uh, for the new normal. One was about the secure remote workforce. The other one was about creating a workplace that is a more trusted environment. This, first, uh, this session is going to focus on uh, the secure remote workforce. And this is even more important now than ever because as more people are not connecting from home to corporate networks uh, across uh, uh, multiple uh, private or public clouds, in this session, we are gonna show you how to improve user experience while providing top security and flexibility. Let me introduce you the two speakers for this session. We have Paul Kornok, a Director of System Engineering, and uh, Patrick uh, Chartour, Technical Solution Architect, Welcome, Paul and Patrick, and over to you. Thanks, Hugo, and thanks to everyone today for joining us. Um, so, as we all know, it's unprecedented times that we're living in, and how we do business is changing. For the next 20 minutes, Patrick and I are going to outline the challenges business face adopting to the new norm and discuss a couple of our secure remote worker solutions. I think that Chuck summed it up perfectly when he was interviewed last month by CNBC when he said, Companies are adapting quickly to the new work from home reality, and many will adopt a hybrid model to support both on and off site work environments. He went on to say, I think you'll see many employees that will continue to work from home, and you'll have many that will go back to the office, and then you'll have some that will do a bit of both. It will change things like how we think about talent in the future. And it's given us confidence that we can hire talent anywhere and have them participate productively on teams, regardless of their location. Next slide. So let's take a look at the challenges we face in this new norm. They fall typically into three buckets, people, process and tools. Number one on most employers list is obviously the safety of its staff and how to enable them to work effectively from home while simultaneously planning their gradual office return. This could include changes to the workspace layout, seating arrangements, building occupancy, and even sanitation practices. Then there's the actual process that will allow employees to seamlessly shift between working from the office, from home, or maybe from a coffee shop. And finally, what tools are required to provision simple, secure remote worker solutions en masse with minimum disruption and still maintain a secure working environment that offers that in-office experience? Next slide. Work is an activity, not a place. The global pandemic has forced the traditional workplace to evolve. Companies are looking for new, innovative ways to reinvent their business models and digitalize their services and operations for the new norm. The nature of work is changing. We're seeing more and more hot desks in workplaces and an increase in expandable workplace solutions such as WeWork, meaning that now we may be sharing critical infrastructure. Workloads and applications are moving to the cloud and virtual meetings such as our very own WebEx are becoming part of everyday life. Next slide. The traditional enterprise office is super complex with hundreds and sometimes thousands of connected users and devices. Typically, it has a complex internal infrastructure and many on-premise business applications, but it's changing. We're seeing more and more critical infrastructure move onto AWS, Rackspace or Azure. There's more demand for cloud-based business apps such as Salesforce and Office 365 and an increased call for roaming laptops and home office connections. In an ideal world, we want to provide the same simple, secure, in-office experience wherever the employee chooses to work from. Next slide. But this creates opportunities for hackers. In a recent Gartner CFO study, they revealed that 74% of those surveyed will move at least 5% of their previously on-site workforce to permanently remote positions post-pandemic. With a physically scattered workforce, online attackers have much more opportunity to invade and harm an organization's users and internal network. As a result of the remote workforce, there's been an increase in email and voice traffic. With this in mind, cyber attackers are using creatively titled pandemic-related emails 
that seem to be coming from legitimate sources. And similarly, voice and SMS phishing attacks are on the rise as remote workers use personal devices to hold conference calls or confirm multi-factor authentication. Next slide. The home is assumed to be a predictable environment that's free from typical issues found in public locations, such as airports and coffee shops. But in reality, it's full of non-compliant family devices, ranging from personal PCs, mobile phones, game consoles, smart plugs, sound systems, smart TVs, an explosion of IoT devices, not to mention Google and Amazon smart assistants, all competing for bandwidth on consumer-grade best effort CPE that's likely never been patched or ever had the Wi-Fi password changed. In addition to this, home routers have become common target for hackers using methods such as the open source Miria tool to compromise devices for command and control purposes. And there's reportedly nearly a dozen vulnerabilities in the VxWorks networking stack, which is commonly used in home networking equipment. Next slide. There are multiple ways <coughs> to be a home worker. So how do we secure the home worker? In order to implement a successful work from home strategy, we must acknowledge that different roles may require different capabilities. There are a few personas that different work from home models use. There's the hardware user. Typically these are executives and client facing employees requiring hardware devices. There's a software user, field employees and road warriors benefiting from an all software solution. We have cloud users, employees only using cloud-based applications that may only have mobile devices on hand. And then there's IT operations who are in charge of rapid deployment support and who need to have visibility into end user experience. Though these persona-based architectures vary, the value of a Cisco solution is that they can all be managed in a cohesive way. This allows for flexibility and cost optimization as our customers support more employees working from home. Next slide. What Patrick's gonna talk you through next are two secure remote working solutions based around Cisco technology that offer plug and play zero touch provisioning combined with a no compromise security solution that leverages our very own Talos Threat Intelligent Organization to protect every aspect of your business. Over to you, Patrick. Thank you, Paul, and welcome, everybody. So as Paul was mentioning uh, during his presentation, this work from home hybrid model, this completely changed uh, from where our users and application are located, uh, depending on the day of the week, even sometimes, is really impacting us. And it really means that we need to rethink the way we deploy, operate, and secure the network. In Cisco, we understand how do we interconnect the user, which can be located anywhere today, in a home office, in a remote office, in a different place during the week, uh, maybe in a corporate office from time to time, um, and the application, which is in the same situation. Where is the application? Is it on-premise in the private data centers, or is it already in the cloud? Do I already embrace software as a service, such as Office 365, or do I use WebEx from Cisco? Or do I already started to migrate my infrastructures into a cloud provider like uh, AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud? So in order to interconnect the user and the application, in Cisco, that's what we name Cisco SD-WAN, Software Defined WAN. But no matter which choice you will make, if you decide to go with Meraki SD-WAN because you look for a simple and secure full-stack solution, which can provide you SD-WAN, but not only, and that you can easily manage and operate from a well-known cloud-based portal Meraki dashboard. Or if you decide to go with Viptela SD-WAN because you're looking for secure cloud-scale solution with high segmentation and flexibility of design and configuration. No matter your choice, the both use case we've been mentioning, simplicity of use and deployment, and security, high-scale security, and that ability to adapt our policy security based on the current situation will be there. So let's have a look a little bit more in each of the use cases. And let's start by easy to deploy. And for that example, I'm going to use Meraki SD-WAN, just for the purpose of the conversation. So as you're aware, Meraki 
is providing an SD-WAN solution, but not only. You can also get all the other services you need for either your home office or your branch office or uh, your campus. It can be switching, wireless, routing, security, uh, analytics, combined with the best of brief of Cisco solutions from a security aspect like Umbrella, HAMP, High Status, everything operate and manage from the well-known Meraki cloud-based dashboard. This is a lot of solution. This is a lot of features and, and, and function you can get. But it's also very, believe me, easy to deploy. But rather than showing you on slide, we've been asking a few of our employees inside Cisco to show us that they can actually deploy their home office in 60 seconds. So let's have a look and play the video. Sixty seconds may not look like a lot of time to be able to achieve any configuration, but this is not the case for Cisco Meraki. For this occasion, my colleague Rance challenged me to create an scalable working from home solution to allow employees to be able to connect from their residence to the headquarters. And for this case, I decided to use the template feature. And the template will essentially create a canvas for baseline configuration that will then replicate it to individual networks, but the configuration is created once. And particularly for the working from home solution, we have created an, a subnet that will be uh, unique for each one of the individual networks. And that subnet will be then added to the VPN communication. And so from the administrator perspective, no additional configuration is required. Once the employee uh, has the teleworker gateway, they just need to connect this device to the internet. The device will fetch the configuration by default and uh, they will be able to connect to the corporate resources um, without any additional uh, configuration. And that is precisely the power of Cirotas provisioning for Cisco Meraki. So as you can see, it's been very simple in, I was about to say 60 seconds, but it was even less than 60 seconds to deploy this solution. Obviously, there was a bit of pre-staging done before, but even this pre-staging was able to be done without having someone in the office. And you can easily set your home office like that. Now, let's move to the second use case, which is about how do I combine SD-WAN capacity with security? As Paul was mentioning, there's a ton of attack running right now. Phishing, malware, ransomware, attacking the network, the users, and the application. With SD-WAN, obviously, in context of the Tela SD-WAN, we have the ability and to embrace a zero trust model. So we are fully securing the infrastructures, the network, for me at home, I'm using my own internet connection, but I'm completely encrypted going to the, uh, the corporate network. However, attackers are very clever, okay? And they will find whatever way to attack you. And in the situation we are today, they, they really try to find the small bridges. And that's where it's very important to be able to implement SD-WAN combined with the best of breed solution we have from a security possibility. But let's not go too much in technical aspect. Let's have a look at a typical use case. And this is a use case or scenario that any of us can be into. But I will be the John Doe for today. So Patrick is working from home. He's lucky. He's got the always on environment provided by my company. I have an SD-WAN connection. I'm encrypted uh, uh, to my corporate network. My Wi-Fi is secure because I've got dot one x I have a corporate laptop. I'm lucky. I'm working. But as any user, I'm going to check my email, personal and corporate, and I'm going to use my uh, company laptop to do that. And I receive an email, which is about my medical health insurance company, asking me for some information and clicking on the link to provide those information to get my bill paid. Well, I have two choices, because this email looks strange. My first choice is just delete it and take the risk to not get my money. And my second choice is actually to leverage some of the advanced security function and contact my cloud security team using Umbrella Investigate and ask them to check that email and specifically, specifically sorry, the URL embedded into that email. And I was right, because one of the URL inside this email was malicious. It was a phishing attempt. Okay. So what does it mean? Not only I prevented myself to make something wrong, I used the advanced security function uh, of my company uh, to make it happen, but 
we are not looking to only secure this user. We are looking to actually secure the whole network and having SD-WAN and security function working together embedded into the same solution. I can now, as an operator, even remotely take that lesson learned, go to my vManage, which is my SD-WAN uh, VIPTELA portal, apply a new policy or modify an existing security policy. And this prevention access to this URL will not only be done for this particular user, but all my remote user, as well as all my network. Now, if we move on, if you want to provide an always on, especially uh, uh, an always on environment for your um, employees, you need to ask yourself a few questions. Can I provide always on work from home services to all my employees? As Paul mentioned, it may depend on the type of employees and you may have to go with different uh, solution. I need to think about everything that can impact also this offer I will give to my remote worker. How do we communicate? What tools do we use? How do we communicate internally? How do we communicate externally with our customers? What is the impact of applications such as audio and video as we are using today? Am I able to provision and monitor at scale? Because scaling is becoming very important. I have more and more deployment because I have more and more single isolated user uh, connecting to my network. Security, we mentioned it. But last but not least, how does my long-term business continuity plan look like or evolve? Because what we're speaking today about people working from home or in an hybrid environment is just the starting point. We are just for most of us in Horizon 1 or Horizon 2. Horizon 1 is we respond. We had to respond to the situation. We had to put people at home but allow them to continue to work and have a certain business continuity. In Horizon 2, we already started to plan for the next 3 to 12 months, but it's still about stabilizing the situation. We need then to move to 3 and 4, uh, which is about taking lesson learned. Remember, this single email I received, this is a lesson learned. This is no matter what I do, there will be potential attack from uh, those people. So I need to be able to react to. I need to get this flexibility on the top of this um, easy to deploy and easy to secure. And to do that, I may have to take risk. And um, uh, um, Eric mentioned it in his presentation. Going up to Horizon 4, which is really where we will put those new models to work, and we will have all the lesson learned, and we will be able to restart our business in a secure and flexible way of working. That concludes uh, uh, our presentation for today. And uh, let's play maybe a small video, and then we will come back to Hugo for Q&A. Cycling's my passion. Time to think, to get inspired, to connect. I love the simplicity, the speed, the agility. The freedom. I'm Stuart Little, I'm Commercial Director of PCM Technology Solutions UK, an American company and a global provider of IT technology and services, and in May 2017 entered the UK market. PCM very quickly grew to six sites through acquisition and also organic growth. When PCM in the UK started up, all the systems were spread across different sites, there was no integration at all. We are network experts, our customers are relying on us. When we upgrade our own network, we've got to get it right. When we started looking at the options for building wide area networks, that became restrictive. We didn't want to have to wait months that it would take to install circuits, they were more expensive. It became obvious very quickly that SD-WAN was the choice and the technology we should use. It's a lot quicker and simpler to deploy. When I'm out cycling, I get time to think about what the ideal network would look like. SD-WAN gets close to that. The management of it's simple. It's a single dashboard where we can manage everything. We can see across all networks with full visibility. Security is baked into it and it integrates with all the complete portfolio of Cisco security products that we already have. An example of SD-WAN's agility was that PCM had to open a new site within seven days' notice. With Cisco SD-WAN, we ship out 
a V Edge box to the site. All we need is an internet circuit and I can remotely push out the policies and configuration from the dashboard. Engineers love it. They get home to spend time with their families. PCM has been working with Cisco for many years delivering solutions. We always know we've got the support of advanced services before you encounter any issues. They were great, their knowledge was second to none. Our network is now fast, agile and secure and our staff can work anywhere efficiently. This gives us speed, agility and freedom. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, um, uh, Patrick. Uh, we can tell by the amount of questions that we have in the Q&A panel that uh, many of our customers are looking into uh, this type of solution nowadays. Okay. And uh, before I go to uh, a, a couple of questions from the Q&A panel, I want to. Uh, I think that uh, I want to highlight one comment that it has uh, uh, show up in the Q&A panel is that uh, about it, it was a good setup for Paul and Patrick to present a session about working from home, actually working from home. Okay, so <laughs> there was a comment that uh, I, I was uh, a, a couple of um, uh, people uh, uh, put in the in the Q&A panel. Now to the uh, to the question. Um, there is one question about in the traditional one environment, we are used to uh, implement uh, some of the uh, Cisco routers with uh, a lot of uh, integrated services, like for instance, voice. And it seems that there is confusion in the Q&A because uh, there are uh, people assuming that those integrated services are available in the SD1 solution and uh, some people that are asking us if they were not available. So maybe you can, one of you can clarify that. Uh, yeah, I go. I can take it. So, uh, from from a Viptela SD1 solution perspective, uh, when we acquired Viptela, uh, it was obvious for the company that we wanted to integrate uh, the Viptela SD1 solution on the top of our classical iOS 60 platform and software. Um, as any software integration is taking time, so um, for a certain time we didn't have all the services available. But since uh, April this year. Uh, we now have the ability to have unified communication, sip based uh, uh, infrastructures, and SD WAN combined in the same uh, uh, Cisco routers. But not only that, we have the ability to have a single management interface, which is vManage, our SD WAN management plane, to actually deploy, operate the SD WAN side of the network, but also now the UC integration. And uh, we're speaking about a scenario like SIP call uh, with um, SRST uh, and so on, as well as support for any type of call control, whether you use a call control which is on-premise with, I would say, classical unified call manager, or you already embrace unified communication as a service uh, or WebEx team. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Patrick, for clarifying that. Then uh, there are a lot, also a lot of questions relating to uh, segmentation. So questions about the Meraki, Cisco Meraki SD1, uh, Cisco Viptela SD1, and uh, uh, whether uh, uh, full segmentation is supported or uh, what type of, of, of segmentation is supported. Can any of you clarify that for the audience? Yeah, here we go. From a, um, a Meraki point of view, um, yeah, I mean, we, we support segmentation at the moment. Uh, so layer three isolation is totally doable. Um, you can add firewall rules to the concentrator, concentrator and perform things like inbound and outbound rules for each branch by network. Um, we've just introduced network objects. It makes that a lot simpler as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually working on SGT, so secure group tags. Uh, that will interact with our adaptive policy and the Cisco TrustSec architecture. Okay, so th then um, any, anything you want to add, Patrick? 
Well, yeah, no, poor coverage from, from Iraqi side, from Viptela side, segmentation has been, um, as I mentioned in my presentation, a of the solution say, since the beginning. Uh, there's a lot of work we're doing there uh, because there's a big needs, not only about segmenting the user or the flow, is also applying potentially different topology and network design because um, based on different type of usage and segmentation, we may need to apply different design. Uh, and we also work on scaling. Recently, we've been uh, extending the capacity we have on our higher routing devices such as ASR 1K to provide very you know, uh, big scale in terms of segmentation as well. Okay, so I think it's clear. Segmentation is there. offered <laughs> in, both, uh, in both solutions. Now, also, uh, we are seeing some questions about um, one of uh, uh, the benefits that uh, people is calling out in the Q&A pa um, uh, panel is about uh, the cost of the links. Uh, but there is a question about what what should be the use or the benefit for me to run an SD1 solution if actually the internet link cost is higher than the MP MPLS1 connectivity. So is there any benefit for uh, this type of uh, situations? Yeah, I can take it. And, and um... This whole story about optimizing the cost on, 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 on the link, it, it's completely different, as you mentioned, you go based on where you locate it. Uh, sometimes an internet link is the same cost as the MPLS, sometimes it's different. But SD1 is not only about that. This is just one use case, okay? SD1 is about a lot of things. And for me, the main point when you look at SD1 is the fact that we've been decorrelating the management, the control, and the data plane, which mean now from a single place, in the case of Meraki dashboard for, for Meraki SD1 or, or vManage from a Viptela SD1 solution, you can make changes, policies, and fine tuning to your network. Coming back to my, my example of this attack through an email, the remediation was done in the same point in vManage, applying the same security policy all across my network. And if you think about the traditional routing environment, to do that, you will have to go on every boxes. Okay, and make this change, okay, and wait for the switch to be available. Where with an SD1 solution, you do it in a single place. So it's an easy way to automate uh, uh, how you operate and fine tune your network. It's also about security, it's also about securing the users on the network. So it's SD1, it's not only about the cost. And I know it was built around this message, especially in US. Initially, because in US, MPLS is very expensive, low bandwidth, where internet is cheaper. But um, personally, I've never been using that as an argument because for me, SD1 is far more than just optimizing the cost on link. Th thank you, Patrick. I think it's clear that uh, the benefits uh, for SD1 they go beyond uh, uh, interlink uh, or, or link uh, cost uh, savings. True. Uh, thanks for. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, this very insightful uh, uh, session, Patrick and, uh, and uh, Paul.